Welcome to this part 2 about the liquid crystal display. Very old, but still very relevant technology. In the previous video, we ended with this beautiful transparent DSM LCD. DSM was replaced after only two years with this TN, Twisted Nematic Liquid Crystal Display. Introduced in 1974 and still widely used today. It was easier to read than DSM and the battery life was way better. This old watch, for example, has a claimed battery life of 10 years. And now, 14 years later, it's still running on the same battery. In fact, it needs so little power, it can run on water. Even a small static charge activates random segments. But my favorite example is this little device. All the way from my childhood. It contains a message from January 1993. All this time it's been using the same battery. To me, that is amazing. All right, here we go. It had to happen sometime explaining the technology. A TN LCD uses polarizers. So first we have to understand polarized light. Light consists of photons. While moving at light speed, they shake, which is the light wave. This wave can be at any angle. Now the polarizer has microscopic slits. Waves not parallel with these slits cannot pass. The result is that all passing light waves are parallel to each other. I'm sorry. That was take 26 and it still didn't go right. Perhaps I should stick to drawing. So polarized light is parallel light waves. If you add a second polarizer and rotate it 90 degrees, all light gets blocked. And this is where the nematic twisted liquid crystal comes in. Nematic means that all molecules in the crystal are aligned parallel. Like here. Then we take a glass plate and add super small scratches. The molecules of the crystal align to the scratches. Now we take a similar glass plate, but rotate it 90 degrees, just like the polarizer. The result, the molecules in the crystal twist 90 degrees. But only if the distance between the two plates is exactly right. This is achieved by using glass beads of an exact size mixed in the crystal. Those are the dots you see here. The twisted molecules guide the light waves and rotate them 90 degrees. This means that the light does now pass through the second polarizer. And now liquid crystal magic. When applying an electric current, the molecules untwist, meaning that the light does not pass through the second polarizer. So all that's left is locally applying current in any shape you want with transparent conducting material. Like the DSM I explained in part one. Glass plates, polarizers, a TN LCD too by default is transparent, but not completely. Since the passing light is polarized, part of it gets lost. And here you see why so little transparent LCDs are sold. Instead, most of them look grey. That is the result of the diffuse reflective backplate that is added for optimal brightness. The loss of light due to polarization makes it look grey. But how about a gold color? Hmm, seems to work. A bit darker. And how about plain white? That's working surprisingly well. It doesn't have the viewing angle of the diffused silver. Leaves the riddle 
Why do they never use it? And while we're at it, let's give it a little twist. White with blue stripes. Just because we can. Hmm. Looks medical. Maybe it needs a backlight. So white is working. How about fluorescent pink? Ah, still very readable. Looks like red now. So that means... I've never seen this done. Or maybe I have. G-Shock. These watches come in a wide spectrum of colors, where sometimes the display indeed matches the casing. And you may have noticed that various displays are inverted. How does that work? Let's use this old calculator to demonstrate. Because I can remove the top polarizer. To invert, I only have to rotate it. Or flip it around. The liquid crystal behaves the same, the polarization still changes. I decided to fancy up my calculator with some color filters. There goes the polarizer, and here the colors. Ah, that looks nice. Yet, I did something wrong. I placed the color filter in between the two polarizers. The result? Rainbow colors. This is even more fancy than I anticipated. Not too good for the readability though. To prevent this, I have to place the color filter in front of the polarizer, not in between the two. Problem solved. So why is this happening? Let's do some research. Here is a very modern LCD, a monitor. And this is a polarizer that I place in front of the lens. The light is blocked. Most transparent materials, like plastic, break up the polarization. That results in these beautiful colors. Let's rotate the polarizer back. These color artifacts are exactly what happened with the green filter that I used. This filter also has an influence on the polarization. So, could we use transparent film to change the color of an LCD? A piece of tape, perhaps? Yo, brother. That looks promising. Wow, it also inverts the display. I just pimped my calculator to next level coolness, man. But there is a third way to give an LCD color. By using a bad quality polarizer, so to speak. Blue being the most seen version. The polarizer of this old 90s watch, in test mode, has degraded to a level that the digits are brown rather than black. And of course, backlight can also change the color. Speaking of backlight, when using color filters in front of the backlight, you can simulate a full color screen while it's really monochrome. Long story short, there are plenty of ways to give a monochrome LCD color. You could make it green and red or partially orange, negative, inverted, red filter, blue filter, and... Okay then, just one more. This is a hybrid display I filmed years ago. Switching the stereo set on reveals a backlit LCD. But when switching to tape, it changes to transparent. And when you switch it off, it becomes a not really reflective LCD. Well, I think that's enough for today. In the next video, color techniques that I do not yet understand and remarkable multicolor displays. I hope to see you then.